Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about sequential annual coding. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're basically going to assign a code to each customer based on the year that they joined, that they became a customer. Okay? That's pretty straightforward once you think about it. All right, today's question comes from Sandra in Norfolk, Arkansas, a gold member. Wait a minute, Sandra, didn't you just get a video like two or three days ago? That's okay, I like this question, so I, uh, I, I decided to make a video on it last minute. And uh, Sandra posted this in my forums on my website under the sequential numbers video, which is another video that I did that's very similar to this. I'm going to point you to that one in a minute. And of course, I love my guys, Adam and Scott, everybody else jumped in and and, uh, you know, they, they gave her a working solution, but I, of course, you know me, I've got to give my two cents. So that's what this video is. All right. So go watch the sequential numbering video. If you haven't already, where I teach you how to make a counter. And this basically was from another customer who said that his accountant wants sequential order IDs in his database. Cause you know how, when we use an auto number, we can't always guarantee that that auto number is going to be sequential. Sure. It starts at one and counts up, but. You can't rely on it. If you delete some stuff in the middle, you lose those numbers. Again, auto numbers are not for you. That's a whole different video. But in this video, I do teach you how to make sequential numbers so that if, for example, you end up deleting record five, you can get record five back. Here's another similar video that just gives you a counter for each one, doesn't assign it to that record. But when you display them, it says, this is record one, two, three, four. And if you display them a different way, it'll say, okay, here they are, record one, two, three, four. So that's a slightly different video. Go watch this if you want to. Also, go watch my decount video. Decount's a function we're going to use to count the number of other people that are in the database that are from the same year so that we get the, the count of how many records there are already so we can add to that. Okay, go watch this video. But no matter what you do for today's video, you're going to have to know a little tiny bit of VBA. Now, I'm going to show you everything you need. But if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you all the basics, everything you need to know to get started. Okay? Okay. All right, here we go. So back to Sandra's question. Sandra said, I'm a pug breeder. That's awesome. I got a couple dogs myself. I got a couple black labs. For each litter, the pup is given a number. For example, 22-001 is the first pup of the year 2022. I can't figure out how to make the sequential numbering work for this format of year they are born. Welp date. Okay. And the sequence they are born. Can someone help? Well, the first thing, Sanders, I'm going to try to talk you out of using that format because you're going to run into a year 2000 problem when 2099 rolls around if you're still doing this in 77 years. <laughs> So I'm going to change your format to 2022-001. But if you don't like it, I'll show you how to do it the other way too. And I'm going to switch it from dogs to customers because I already have a customer form and a customer table built. And I don't feel like building a dog table. But it doesn't matter if you're doing dogs or customers or purses or jet engines. doesn't matter. It's all the same stuff, just different field names. All right, let's see how I would do this. All right, so the first thing I need in my customer table, in your dog table, whatever it is, is I'm going to need a code to put in here. So we're going to call this the customer code. Okay, and that'll be a text field. Make sure there's no default value. All right, we're going to close this. Save changes, yes. Now on my customer form, since this is based on customer sense, I'm going to move customer sense over here. Okay, and I'm just going to copy this guy, copy, paste. And we'll change this guy to being based on customer code. Don't forget to change the name. Okay. I'm going to rename this customer code. Now, I'd suggest you lock this, and I'm going to gray it out. So this way, the user can't just type in what they want. All right, if you want to lock it too, you can come over here, go to data. They locked as yes, so the user can't just type whatever they want in there. Unless that's something that you want to do. If you've got existing dogs with existing dog codes, customer codes, you can type those in if you want, leave it unlocked. I don't care. It's your database, right? <laughs> now, you need some way to trigger this to, to calculate. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. For now, let's just use a button. All right, let's grab one of these buttons, copy, paste, slide you over here. 
All right, we'll make this the calculate button. So when I click on this, it'll calculate it based on the customer sense. We'll talk about some other ways to trigger this in a few minutes. Okay, so this will be the uh, calculate customer code button or whatever you want to call it. Okay, right click, build event. There's our code builder. Let me slide this down like this. We don't need you for now. Let me size this form a little bit. There we go. Okay. So what do I want to do in here? I want to calculate the number of people who have a customer sense from this year already, or whatever the customer sense of this customer is. Because you're going to want to go back and do the old ones too. Okay, so we got to look at the customer sense of all the people in the table who match the same customer sense as this person. So first thing we're going to do, first of all, is if is null customer ID, then exit sub. All right, if this isn't a person, then exit sub. And if they don't already have a customer sense, if you haven't typed it in already, you can either exit sub again or you can assign it. Let's say you're putting a new pup in the database, new person in the database. You could say if is null customer sense, then customer sense equals today's date, for example. So if you haven't already put the customer sense in, assume it's a new pup, new person, whatever. Okay. All right. So there's two things we're going to do right off the top. Another thing you might want to do is not allow them or at least warn them if they try to calculate this thing again and they already have a code. Okay, so you could do if uh, if not is null uh, customer code, then what do you want to do? Let's, let's ask them, are you sure you want to override it? This is going to override it, are you sure, right? If message box, uh, this will overwrite existing customer code, are you sure? Right, comma, VB, yes, no, cancel. And if that is anything other than VB, yes, then exit sub. Okay. I'll add some links to some other videos if you don't know what is null, an if-then statement, or the message box function are. I'll put those in the link section down below. Okay, now we get to the meat and potatoes. Now we got to count how many other records, all right, are from the same year as this one who... Have a person number already, don't count the null ones that haven't been assigned, okay? And are also not this person, because if they've got a record in the database already and they've already got one, you don't want to count them in the count. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we need to store that variable somewhere. Let's make a variable up here, dim l as along, as along. And I'll add a link down below if you don't know what variables are. All right, down here we're going to say l equals d count. All right, what am I counting? Count all of the records from the customer table. All right, here's our big long where condition. The first thing is the year of customer sense, in your case, Sandra, it'd be whelp date. The year of the customer sense is the same as the year of the customer sense of the current record. Okay, so year of customer sense of the record in the table is the same as the year of the customer sense of this record. So I'm saying, for example, if the current record is from 2022, I want to count up all of the other records in the table that are from 2022. Okay, makes sense? Okay. That's not all, but wait, there's more. I want to make sure they have a customer code already because there might be other records in there that haven't been assigned. So if there's... You know, if you put in 15 records previously, and this is the first one you're actually giving a code to, this will be record one. So you want to make sure you do them in order. Okay, so and not is null uh, customer code. In other words, only add up the ones that have a customer code. Okay, one more thing, but wait, there's more. All right, we don't want to count this record. Because if you've already saved this record in the table and this is the first one, this one's going to be, you know, not included. So this we're going to have zero, and then we're going to add one to it at the end. So, and the customer ID of the record in the table is not the customer ID of the current record. So add all that stuff up, okay? And then you could do it in two steps if you want to, or one step, right? L equals L plus one. You're going to add one to that. 
You could put the plus one over here. I know. I'm When I'm teaching this stuff, I'm more about making the code readable than I am about making it compact. Yeah, you can put multiple stuff together in one statement, but I like to make sure that when you're rereading this code, you understand what I'm doing instead of just tacking a plus one over here. This is because if this is the first record, okay, if this is the first dog you're adding, the first customer you're adding, it's going to say, okay, count up all the other customers from the same year who have a customer code and are not me. All right, that might return a zero. So now we have to add one to it. This is going to be customer one or pug one or whatever you want to call it. And now we can format that person code, which is a text string. Now, again, I strongly recommend using a four digit year. So I'm going to say person or not person code, customer code equals the year of their customer sense date, right? Cust customer sense, right? So that if, if you're doing 1994, it's going to be 1994 and then a dash. Come here, dash. And then we want to take that L value, right? One, two, three, whatever. I want to format it as you want a three digit year or a three digit number. I'm going to say I'll do a four digit number just because to be different, <laughs> right? Format L comma zero, 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 zero. That says take that L. Oh, come on. I can't type today. Sometimes I have a hard time typing and talking at the same time. <laughs> All right. So take that customer code. Give me a four digit year value. Put a hyphen there and then a four digit L value for that, whatever it is. All right, save it. And yes, Sandra, if you're going to be stubborn, you can do this. You can also say, give me the right of that comma two, and you'll get just 21, 22, 23, and so on. But I am sticking to my gun. Okay. <laughs> and now let's see if it works. Let's close this. Save changes, yes. Open up a customer form. I'm going to sort these by customer sense. There's 29 records in here. I'm going to right click on this field and sort them oldest to newest. Okay, so the first one's in here is 87. Let me click the calculate button. Boom. 1987, 0001. All right, that's good. Let's go to the next one. There's an 89. Okay, good. 8901. 90. There's a 9001. What do we got? Where's the next one? 94, 95. Let's skip it. Okay, 95's got a couple records. So let's do 94. Boom. All right, 95. Here we go. 9501, next record, 95002, uh -huh, see, next record, 95003, looks like it's working, 96, 7, 8, there's a bunch of 8s, 9, I think 2000, okay, 2003, there's a bunch, but let's say I don't do them in order, all right, here's the first 2003 record, let me skip ahead a couple, let me say this, let's say Getty Lee's the first 2003, boom, he gets assigned 01, because none of the other 2003s have been assigned a number yet, okay, let me go back a couple, Here's the first 2003, hit calc, boom, that's 2003 -02. Now, obviously, I'm doing this in the order that I calculate them. If you want to make sure it's definitely in sequential number, that's up to you. Then you definitely want to make sure that you assign them in the order of their birth date. Okay, that's completely up to you. So make sure when you're going through, you sort them, all the existing records, you sort them and then click the button in the order that you're going down. Now, if you got thousands of records already and you want to assign these numbers without having to click the button each time, that'll be a separate video. And we could do that by taking this function, well, by taking this subroutine, making it a module, okay, that, a function that'll return a value. And then we can use that value that's returned in a query. We can do an update query. That, however, will be a separate video if you really, really want to see it. And if that's the case, let me know. Post in the comments down below. And if I'm feeling generous that day, maybe I'll make a video on that. <laughs> or you can consider that homework if you want. <laughs> now, there are a lot of other things you can do in here. I had a, a, a million ideas while I was doing this. Um, you can have it so that this is triggered when customer sense is, is typed in. Right, the first time you type in the customer sense, it automatically triggers that. That's just a matter of running that same code in the after update event for this guy. I'll include a link to my after update video if you want to use that. You could put it in the after insert event for the form. Uh, you could make this required if you want to make sure that the person, when they're typing in a new dog, definitely figures that out. Cal calculate button, whatever. There's a million things you can do. 
The goal for this video was for me to just show you this and how I would calculate that number. I personally would do it in a button, that's just me, and make it so that if the user tries to leave this form or close the record, if this is required, it'll say, ah, ah, ah you, gotta you gotta calculate that number first. That's just how I would do it. But uh, totally up to you. It's your database. I just show you how to put the Legos together. I hope this uh, helps you out. And again, special thanks to all my moderators who helped Sandra out in the forums. I just saw the question, and I, I know we get asked this a million times. How do I do a sequential number for this or for that? And I've done three videos on it now so far, and they're all slightly different. And so I hope that this helps everybody out. And um, yeah, hope you learned something. And um, I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.